Hi guys, it's me. Good afternoon, everybody. It's the 24th of August, 2013. And uh, today I wanted to just give you uh, an in-studio video instead of one of those roving reporting videos uh, for a lot of reasons. Number one, the first thing is, is that my arm gets tired. <laughs> I think they were phone up all the time. And the second reason is, is that the sound quality isn't always there. And the third reason is, is I think you're tired of looking at half a face. Um, now, I did some research today into a couple different topics. And so we're going to, but like Lumi and I discovered, it makes sense to keep the video relatively short because it seems to be the kind of thing you guys like for the most part. So here we go. There's questions about transgendered Americans and um, the rights, and um, and it, it's kind of funny to talk about that because transgendered Americans, because their rights are often being placed in the same um, uh, grouping as gay rights. It's, it's, it's opening up a lot of new opportunities to discuss the difference between biological sex and gender. Now, I am a hermaphrodite, okay? I'm a little different in the sense that I'm with the bodies built both male and female. So, therefore, I do have a bit of a different situation here. However, a lot of the stuff that we're hearing about is that and no it didn't happen sooner than that. sorry that we're hearing about is is that until recently um transgendered people were really not appreciated by anybody um because we would think they were deviant and off the wall and things like that but thanks to things such as um since the year of Stonewall, New York, um, we had in the 1960s, we have seen a lot of new um, research in the um, psychosexual area of um, the sciences discussing that there is indeed, each person does have a biological gender and each person has a biological sex. And if you're hermaphrodite, <laughs> sex is. Although, in my case, one more is dominant than the other, but that's that works out for me in the long run. But that's, my, my case is unique because uh, there's not too many uh, people with two souls. But we'll discuss that in another blog. Anyway, so um, now what was passed in the state of California by Jerry Brown is perfectly would be great if we had this law when I was a kid because it would have made life, life for a lot of transgendered youth a lot easier. You see, back when I was a kid, and I just kind of shows my age. I am forty five. I'll be forty six in February. Um, things were really different. If you were a boy and acted like a girl or effeminate, you were teased, bullied, and you were really felt extremely uncomfortable being in, say, the men's room for because you were looked at in a very negative connotation. On the other hand, because you associated with more, possibly more as a female, or maybe, this is, this is gets, where it gets, get a little, get sense of the gray area. Maybe you're not really sure. Okay, so you kind of try to, you know, play cool, but, you know, you're, you're, whatever your real gender is going to be, it's going to um, develop as you grow older. Especially after you hit puberty, you're going to start to really notice whichever your gender is. If you will identify with one or the other sex. Now, um, in the case of um, California's rules, it says, on their law, it says, we 
will allow transgendered youth to use the bathroom of their preference. In other words, if you're uh, atomically a little boy and you feel comfortable as a girl, you can go into the girl's bathroom and there should be no repercussions or reprisals providing you do what you got to do and you don't make a stinkeroo out of the deal, okay? After all, there is obviously, you know, uh, you know, has to be some reasonable, you know, stipulation somewhere. Um, however, some well-to-do parents have said, um, especially of the state legislature of California, so just, uh, legislator said, I am removing my children from public school because of this. I don't want my son to be traumatized because a girl is using the men's room. Fine, that's your choice, okay? Um, it, it is your choice, okay? It turns out that it says the public schools. It doesn't say anything about private academies or anything like that. But I think it's time to just get rid of the bathroom business in the beginning. I mean, why do we even have to segregate anymore? It's just stupid. Have a unisex bathroom. They all have stalls anyway, right? Oh, that's true. Men's bathrooms have stand-up urinals and little tiny partitions which you can barely, you know, shield yourself from. Full fucking fine. Put full stalls in if you want. There you go. One big bathroom, say with, you know, six toilets, six sinks, or how many sinks you use, you know, your code, building code says in your state. Okay? And it always says, Yoni Sacks on the door. It's got a picture of a man and a woman icon and, of course, a wheelchair icon for the handicap. That would solve the problem. Period. Let's be honest. When you're in the bathroom and you're using the toilet and you close the door, okay, and you lock the door behind you and you do your business and then you get out and you go over to the sink, you wash your hands, you dry your hands, right? Does anybody really honestly make a big deal about what bathroom? Does it really matter anymore? Where did we come up with this in the first place? I don't even know why our society had to be so... It's it's stupid. I mean, it's stupid because we talk about segregation. Oh, this is segregation in its own extreme. And this is... You know, I think that it's time to get rid of this segregation. It's, this is time to basically say to the building goods, why have two bath? I love this one. Why have two bathrooms in a restaurant, which has one, each one has one sink and one toilet, and you have to have a sign in the door that says man and woman, okay? They're individual use bathrooms in the first place. Why don't you just say restroom? Because it's a single use bathroom anyway. This is one of the reasons why I find this whole situation just so totally mind numbingly boring. It's the fact is that we have to segregate bathrooms, even a single toilet, single sink ones, into boys and girls, men and women. If it's a single single use bathroom, why well, we just say restroom? Like I said, say put a picture of a man, a picture of a woman, a picture if it's wheelchair accessible, wheelchair accessibility sign on it. Problem solved. This is re this is what I'm trying to get at. It not saying it will totally simplify the building code because obviously, it, depending on the business, there will have to be enough bathrooms for your patrons. That's not going to change. But this bullshit of trying to delegate one for the other is makes no sense. Now, if when I was a child, if I could have been allowed to have the flexibility to choose to be a part, and this is what also the California law does, says that 
transgender children and teenagers should have the right to play on the sports of their choice. I mean, boy sports and girl sports, okay? What sports do you think I'd be on? I'd be on the girls' teams, obviously. We came again. This is a segregation bullshit. And it goes... It's just ridiculous. Bradley Manning. First of all, okay, fine. You really, yourself as a woman, you gay, and you people in living the world say that since you're a felon, you shall not be entitled to those rights. Well, okay. You want to be treated as a female? Well, then how does that mean that you may not be able to, for whatever reasons, be able to go through and get yourself modified physically or hormonally? And there's just people who can't do that, okay? But societally, socially, sure. But again, you know, you're a felon, okay? You committed a crime against the American people. Okay, so, okay, so maybe we should put you in a female penitentiary, but a federal prison. But this um, is an exception to the rule more than anything. I don't really know much about the situation to really um, pick one. But if you really truly were transgendered, why, why, why? Did you have to wait to after you were convicted before you finally came out in the open and said this? It sounds to me like you're using it to get pity. I mean, I could be wrong, but you know what? If that's true, if you really are if you really are transgendered, don't you think you would have felt this way long before you joined the military? Of course you would have. Oh, but. I couldn't say anything because Clinton's don't ask, don't tell. Kind of attitude. But which is something completely different. I don't even want to go there except to say it was a stupid policy. It's a stupid policy. I'm glad they overrode it. I'm glad that they finally got rid of it. It's just as... It, it was just... It's just stupid. Okay? It sounds tame enough when you listen to it, okay? Don't ask the person's gay, and you don't have to tell them you're gay. Sounds innocent enough, right? Well, it wasn't so innocent. Um, but there's just so many things about this uh, uh, stuff that I could go on for hours and telling you about stories about it, but I'm not going to. Let's just say that there's new changes that have to be taking place on the nationwide scale and also on the state scale and on the local scale. There are conversations that we should be having to protect the people of our country and to make sure that our Constitution is upheld, which is the uh, we agree that all humans are given the unalienable, inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, I guess the gender certainly goes under the pursuit of happiness, but, you know, it gets a little tricky because you've got the old aristocracy that doesn't want to uh, modify or change its ways. But, you know, we have to get with the times you gotta get with the program boys because you can't keep going on like this it's never gonna work it's never gonna help you so I would say with the states which includes mine which while it is not quite as progr as progressive as California the state of California Connecticut one defends and protects transgendered people Two, Connecticut accepts and has endorsed gay marriage. Three, not transgendered. Those same rights also protect me from 
being discriminated against by other people. And that's important. But I also respect that each individual has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Provided, provided that your happiness doesn't mean trying to fuck up my happiness. You see what I'm saying? As long as we can agree that we each have the right to be as we are. And that means that if you want to believe in the flying spaghetti monster, that's your faith, that's your choice. If you want to believe that women should be house homemakers and housewives and only live work in the home, that's fine. That's your choice. If you think that men should never be the Mr. Mom environments trying to raise the kids while his wife's at work, that's fine too. That's your choice. If you believe that men should, you know, should, you know, surgically alter their bodies for whatever reason, you know, because you think it's cool, that's okay. It's your choice. It's your belief. My beliefs don't matter. But that doesn't mean that you should go ahead and infringe on my beliefs. That's what I'm trying to get at. This is where, this is where tolerance comes in. As long as you understand that what you believe is what you believe, and uh, I believe is what I believe. We can have that conversation. We'll talk. I don't mind talking to people. I like talking to you guys. So let's talk. Okay? So leave your comments below. Okay? And we will talk. All right? So um, I'll see you soon. And oh, yes, don't forget to check out Lemmy's video. It really is an interesting topic. And she worked hard on that topic. Okay? Bye-bye.